Talking Points memo obtained thousands of text messages from former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows. And even though none of this is surprising at this point in time, it gives us a very clear image as to how people in power specifically try to overturn the 2020 election and end democracy in the United States. They report, based on TPM's analysis, Meadows received at least 364 messages from Republican members of Congress who discussed attempts to reverse the election results with him. He sent at least 95 messages of his own. Meadows text log shows what the scheme to reverse the election results looked like behind the scenes, revealing new details about which members of Congress helped spearhead the efforts and the strategies they deployed. The members who messaged Meadows about challenging the election included some of the highest profile figures on the right flank in Congress, such as Senator Ted Cruz, Representative Jim Jordan, and Representative Mo Brooks, all of whom are identified as playing leading roles in the effort to undo Trump's defeat. Now, other members of Congress also played roles, but not necessarily leading roles. Still, the text messages that they sent to Mark Meadows are just chilling. What they're calling for is an end to U.S. democracy. I can't stress that enough. So here's what Ralph Norman sent to Mark Meadows just three days before Biden was set to be sworn in. This was on January 17th of 2020. He says, Mark, in seeing what's happening so quickly and reading about the Dominion lawsuits attempting to stop any meaningful investigation, we are at a point of no return in saving our republic. Our last hope is invoking martial law. Please urge to president to do so. Now, since he doesn't know what martial law is, given that he misspelled it, I'm thinking maybe he didn't necessarily know what he was calling for, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You just called for the president of the United States effectively to end democracy in the United States by suspending civil law and invoking military control. Also, you can install Trump as the president after he lost this election. This is a sitting member of Congress who's calling for this, but he's not alone because text messages between Mark Meadows and Marjorie Taylor Greene also sent on December 17th showed that she was urging the same thing and she claims that other lawmakers were also calling for Trump to do this. Rolling Stone explains, by January 17th Green told Meadows that several Republicans in Congress wanted Trump to declare martial law. She too appeared to think giving power to the military was named after a person named Marshall. In our private chat with only members, several are saying the only way to save our republic is for Trump to call for martial law, Green wrote. Quote, I don't know on those things. I just wanted you to tell him they stole this election. We all know they will destroy our country next. Please tell him to declassify as much as possible so we can go after Biden and anyone else. More recently, Green told the New York Post's Zach Williams that if she and Steve Bannon had organized the January 6th attack on the Capitol, they would have executed a successful coup and would have been armed. So we have another sitting member of Congress urging the White House chief of staff to tell the president to invoke martial law, take control by military force and end the U.S. democracy. And according to her, other Republicans wanted Trump to do the same thing. They're actually plotting a coup here. This is a violent overthrow of U.S. democracy by military force. This is what we're learning here. Now, there's other revelations. Other lawmakers were co-conspirators in trying to end U.S. democracy, but we don't have evidence that they explicitly called for martial law, as Marjorie Greene and Ralph Norman did. But what they did is still completely unacceptable. Lawmaker Brian Babin texted Meadows saying, Dear Mark, many of us as Republican House members want to help the president in any way we can to prevent the outright theft of this presidential election. That's ironic considering that theft was their goal. Congressman Mark Green texted Meadows a Newsmax link and saying Dick Morris is saying state legislature can intervene and declare Trump winner. North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin all have GOP legislatures. He's just saying... Let's overturn the results in these states. Congressman Mike Kelly texted Meadows saying we're in Philadelphia suing the Pennsylvania Secretary of State for her illegal meddling in this election, and I will continue to expose fraudulent actions. Let me know if there's anything I can do to fight these MFers in PA. 
So martial law wasn't the only strategy that they were utilizing to overturn the results of the 2020 election. Now, one more revelation that I want to get to here. In an exchange between Brian Kilmeade of Fox News and Mark Meadows, Meadows relayed to Kilmeade that Donald Trump had a meeting before January 6th with 15 Republicans. Some of them were already sitting members of Congress. Others, like Marjorie Taylor Greene, were just elected, hadn't served yet. But as Rolling Stone reports, that meeting was a strategy session to try to find ways to subvert the election. Among those members identified by the January 6th committee as having participated in the meeting were Representatives Jordan, Brian Babin, Andy Biggs, Matt Gates, Paul Gosar, Andy Harris, Jody Heiss, Scott Perry, and then Representative-elect Marjorie Taylor Greene. Yeah. And if you'll recall, after that meeting, Marjorie Taylor Greene posted a video bragging about the strategy session that she had with Donald Trump and others. Just out in the open, talking about how they wanted to overthrow the election. And again, none of this is surprising, but just to see the behind the scenes conversations, the ways in which they wanted to end U.S. democracy is genuinely infuriating, considering that nothing legally has happened to these people. They're not in prison and they're still literally able to serve in Congress. Marjorie Taylor Greene, was able to run for re-election again after literally plotting to overturn the results of the last election. She was a co-conspirator, Ralph Norman, calling for martial law, and they're still able to serve in Congress. We just don't value democracy as a country if we, if we allowed these people to hold on to power. Because people who threaten to overthrow the U.S. government should not have power, but yet we allow them to serve. Do you want to know what countries who care about democracy do? They do what Germany did. As the New York Times explains, the plan was to storm the German capital, arrest lawmakers, and execute the chancellor. A prince descended from German nobility would take over as the new head of state, and a former far-right member of parliament would be put in charge of a national purge. To facilitate the coup, the electricity network would be sabotaged. Satellite phones to communicate off-grid had already been bought. This is what German prosecutors and intelligence officials say a nationwide far right terrorist attack was plotting before 3,000 police officers and special forces fanned out across the country on Wednesday to raid 150 homes and arrest 25 suspected co-conspirators. They included an active duty soldier, a former officer in the elite special forces, a police officer, and at least two army reservists. So in Germany, when they undercovered this coup plot, they took action and they arrested the co-conspirators who were all plotting this coup. Now, some of the individuals were influenced by QAnon. The group who plotted this coup specifically was influenced by QAnon and also citizens of the Reich, which believes that Germany isn't a country. Rather, it's a corporation that was set up after World War II by the Allied forces who won. But long story short, Germany saw that there were these people who were trying to overthrow democracy and they were all arrested. But in this country, we let coup plotters go on to serve multiple terms in Congress. It's because we just don't value democracy in this country as much as Germany values democracy, for example. Because to allow these folks to run for office, it just shows you we're not that concerned about democracy. We're not that concerned about these co-conspirators who plotted with Donald Trump to end U.S. democracy. Because we saw Marjorie Greene, Ralph Norman, all these other folks in Congress today making laws influencing future elections. So it's infuriating to see these text messages, not because I'm surprised and shocked that people like Marjorie Taylor Greene would call for martial law or Ralph Norman would call for martial law. That's not surprising to me. But what is disappointing to me is how little we care as a country. These folks try to kill our democracy, remove our votes from us, and they're still in power. Mike is a total shit lip. Once he started chilling for the DNC, I stopped watching. So I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.